Imagine a monument so magnificent that its construction spanned over 140 years, weaving through generations of architects, artisans, and admirers. What compels a city, and indeed the world, to devote centuries to the creation of a single basilica? How has La Sagrada Familia, the longest running construction project in history, evolved over more than a century? What challenges and breakthroughs have architects faced in continuing Antoni Gaudí's vision? And how close are we truly to witnessing the completion of this architectural wonder? Join us as we explore the saga of the world's longest construction project, from its inception to the modern advancements propelling it towards completion. Discover the architectural marvels, the visionary behind it, and the global anticipation for its final reveal. As the countdown begins, we delve into what the completion of La Sagrada Familia means for Barcelona and the world. Will the final chapter of this 140-year construction live up to the legacy of its creator? Stay tuned as we explore the impending completion of the world's longest construction project, a testament to human creativity and perseverance. The story of the Sagrada Familia started at the initiative of Barcelona-born book merchant Josep Maria Boccabella. He was inspired by the Sanctuary of the Holy House in Loreto, Italy, and decided to build a replica in Barcelona. Boccabella commissioned Francisco de Paula del Villar y Lozano, the Diocesan architect, to design the Sagrada Familia project in 1882. Del Villar suggested a neo-Gothic style with a church layout of the great medieval cathedrals. The plan was to have three naves in a Latin cross-floor plan, a fairly large crypt, an apse with seven chapels, and a pointed bell tower located over the portico, which would rise to 85 metres above street level. These elements gave the building a clearly Gothic look. However, some disagreements happened between Del Villar, Boccabella, and his top advisor, architect Joan Matorel, over the cost of using solid stone pillars in the crypt, which led Del Villar to step down from the project for the first time in his career as an architect. In the year 1883, Antoni Gaudí was offered the role of chief architect of the Sagrada Familia project. He was only 31 years old at the time, but had previously worked for the project's former architect, Del Villar. Even though he was a relatively inexperienced architect at the time, Gaudí approached the project with a confidence and enthusiasm that would come to define his career. Taking over as chief architect of the project in 1883, he immediately set about transforming the original plans, infusing them with his unique and innovative style that drew inspiration from Spanish late Gothic, Art Nouveau, and Modernista styles. Gaudí's vision for the Sagrada Familia was nothing short of majestic. He wanted to create a building that would tell the story of the Christian faith, and to do so, he proposed a Latin cross-floor plan with five naves, a transept, an apse with an ambulatory, cloisters surrounding the building for large processions, twelve bell towers, six lanterns, and three facades. As of now, the structure is designed to have 18 monumental spires, each dedicated to different aspects of Jesus' life. These spires include 12 dedicated to the Apostles, 4 for the Evangelists, 1 for the Virgin Mary, and the tallest spire for Jesus Christ, soaring to a breathtaking height of 170 meters. He even designed the project keeping the geometric principles and proportions in mind. But Gaudí's vision went beyond just the physical structure of the building. He wanted the Sagrada Familia to be a link between heaven and earth a place where people could come to feel closer to God. To achieve this, he designed the Tower of Jesus Christ as the crowning element of the basilica, standing an impressive 172.5 meters above ground level. He used innovative techniques such as double-twist helicoidal columns and precise ratios based on twelfths of dimensions to create a masterpiece that defied traditional architectural norms. He sounds like a devoted Catholic, right? But that wasn't actually the case. He wasn't even a practicing Catholic, but became extremely dedicated to the project and saw it as a means for Christian evangelism. He believed that his clients, or rather God, was never in a hurry 
and therefore took his time to carefully design the structure. In the countless hours he spent designing the project, his appreciation for nature's forms was bound to seep in. He believed that nature was the ultimate source of beauty, and that understanding its principles was the key to creating harmonious structures. He poured this belief into the Sagrada Familia. One of the most outstanding ways in which Gaudí's fascination with natural forms is reflected in the Sagrada Familia is through its structural elements, which are based on the geometric shapes found in nature. He used these shapes to create columns, arches and other structural elements throughout the basilica. For instance, the double twist column, a central feature of the Sagrada Familia, is inspired by the helicoidal twist of oleander branches, a natural form that Gaudí found eye-catching. Even the hexagonal shape of the column is created by twisting an equilateral triangle. The natural form is also seen in the columns supporting the Passion Narthax. These columns support the inclined columns on the façade and have a wide base resembling the tabular roots of trees like the capox and sequoias. Gaudí's use of undulating surfaces in the design of the Sagrada Familia's roofs is another example. Instead of using a traditional pitched roof with rafters, Gaudí designed the roof to be wavy. This design not only makes the roof more aesthetically pleasing, but also helps to channel water out through undulating surfaces, much like the leaves of the magnolia tree. This was an architect who was the definition of an artist dedicating their life to a project. Gaudí was aware that the project might not be completed during his lifetime, and so he spent countless hours drawing up detailed models of the Sagrada Familia. When completed, the structure would occupy an entire block in the city and be a symbol of magnificence for generations to come. Although many private investors expressed interest in funding the project, Gaudí was reluctant and instead chose to self-fund the Sagrada Familia from the start. Even today, the Basilica remains self-funded and relies heavily on donations and tourists who come from all over the world to witness Gaudí's creation. And why wouldn't they? Its beauty is unmatched, no doubt. But its construction has been quite long and turbulent, so it was bound to be affected by several problems and political and social issues. Tragically, the creative process of Gaudí was cut short by a tragic accident in 1926. He was run over by a tram while crossing Gran Via and passed away 15 days later at the old hospital de la Santa Cruz. Gaudí's death derailed the project, which his disciples took over. The basilica was only between 15 and 25% complete at the time. Not to mention, anarchist revolutionaries destroyed Gaudí's priceless models and most of his drawings just 10 years after his death leaving generations of architects and engineers to piece together his singular vision. The Spanish Civil War, of course, had to ruin it even more in 1936. Many parts of the unfinished basilica and Gaudí's models and workshop were destroyed. Anarchists even broke into the cathedral, stole the plans and destroyed the church's crypt. Work only resumed after the unrest ended in 1939. But the plans changed hands many times, with four different architects taking control between 1939 and 1985. Throughout the years, it faced one problem after another. Like on April 19, 2011, when an arsonist started a small fire in the sacristy, which caused damage and forced the evacuation of tourists and construction workers. By 2019, parts completed in the early 20th century had become so old that they needed renovation. Not to mention, despite its grandeur, this masterpiece has not received any support from the government or official church sources. The project has solely relied on the generosity of those who have visited and donated towards its construction. As the most visited monument in Spain, the Sagrada Familia attracts millions of visitors every year. The funds generated from ticket sales and private donations have been used to fund its construction. This has earned it the title of the Expiatory Temple. The annual costs of construction and maintenance are estimated to run up to 25 million euro a year, which are paid for by the site's 3 million annual visitors as well as private donors. The current total estimated building costs stand at 374 million euro. 
It has been under construction for more than a century without a building permit, which led to a historic agreement in 2018 for the church to pay 41 million euro, approximately 45 million dollars, to city authorities over a period of 10 years. As part of the construction process, the church also had to pay for a building permit, which cost 4.6 million euro, making it the most expensive permit in modern Barcelona. In recent decades, the process has been sped up by the use of technology. In the late 1800s, when Gaudí began designing his masterpiece, the Sagrada Familia, Gaudí and his team would often create handmade models to better understand the intricacies of the building's design. A team led by Josep Gomez Serrano continued this tradition by using advanced 3D technology to bring Gaudí's vision to life. Since 1991, the team has utilized CAD S5 software to draft new work on the church. Specializing in 3D modeling, they used the three-dimensional printer located on the Sagrada Familia's grounds to easily create precise prototypes, which reduced the time and cost required for each new piece. Using Materializer's Magic software since 2001, the team perfected their designs before printing to make sure the pieces fit together seamlessly. Advanced systems like Industry 4.0 have allowed architects to precisely control the assembly of the various pieces that make up each panel on the central towers. This system uses sensors on each building piece to automatically control the process from beginning to end. It confirms the right temperature, hardness and tension of the steel rods that hold the panels together, making the construction process more efficient and accurate. Another technology that has been used to save time in the construction process is virtual reality. The architects can send the 3D model to virtual reality glasses at any given time. It creates a virtual view of the 3D model, and architects can check the volume, geometry, texture or light of a specific element they are designing. This way, they can make decisions quickly and safely, speeding up the construction process. But the thing that adds the most to the beauty of the Sagrada Familia is its intricate stone carvings and sculptures. Originally, the lower columns were intended to be built with sandstones from the mountain of Montjuic in Barcelona. This durable and aesthetically diverse material was exclusively found in the region. However, sourcing this specific stone was nearly impossible with the closure of the Montjuic quarries in the 1970s. Builders were forced to look for alternatives from various locations worldwide, with each stone carefully selected to replicate the colour, texture, composition and durability of Montjuic stone as closely as possible. Among the replacements, builders utilised Fragois stone from Galicia, Moray or Clashac stone from Scotland, Lavozzi Arcos from France, Brinskull stone or British beige from England, Vargas stone from Cantabria, and Silvestri Moreno and Silvestri Fino granite from Galicia. Other stones from around the world were Brazil blue granite, red porphyry from Iran, basalt from Catalonia and Italy, Blanco crystal granite from Madrid, and Uldecona stone from Catalonia. In total, approximately 50 different types of stone have been used in the construction of the basilica, each carefully selected to maintain the integrity and vision of the original design. Like everything else in the world, Sagrada Familia was no exception when COVID-19 brought everything to a halt. The pandemic-induced financial crisis forced a nine-month hiatus in construction work. The revenues decreased a lot as the primary funding source for the Basilica's completion was ticket sales, which also took a severe hit. After construction work resumed in June 2020 with a reduced workforce, Sagrada Familia reopened to essential workers in July 2020. This caused a major dent in the original plan of completion, which was to complete the Basilica by 2026 on the centenary of Gaudí's death. However, some experts remain skeptical about whether this deadline is achievable. The Director General of Sagrada Familia himself has acknowledged that the project may not be completed until 2030, 2035 or even 2040. Interestingly, some skeptics have suggested that the prolonged construction timeline may be a deliberate plan to earn income for the Sagrada Familia, but it does sound unsubstantiated. One thing is clear, 
The Sagrada Familia has become an integral part of Barcelona's tourism industry. Even unfinished, it's a marvel of human creativity and perseverance, a legacy for generations to come. What are your thoughts on the completion of this church and its impact on the world? Share your views with us in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons to stay tuned for more content like this.